All right, now that you know a little bit about the setups, you'll, uh, you'll remember that we're reading strengths in order to determine imminent exhaustion, and we use indicators to do that. Some characteristics of our indicators that are very different than, than indicators you've probably used in the past. We, we have what's called heads-up display indicators, and we only display what you need to see to make a decision. We don't give you a lot of superfluous information, you, and you will see that on the current bar. We give you yes-no uh, whether a, a condition exists in the market or not. No shades of gray. These are extremely complex indicators, and it's very easy to look at them and think that they are too simple to be powerful. We spent a lot of time making them simple to use but extremely powerful. We're constantly measuring for strength in the market so that we can anticipate when that strength is going to become exhausted. And then we're measuring for weaknesses to better anticipate when the exhaustion is complete and we can expect a pullback. So what do we use for measuring strengths? You'll see these on your trading charts. Uh, on our trading charts in the trade room, we have our velocity indicator. And this is the rate at which price moves over the course of a bar relative to previous bars. It's used to determine when price may be getting exhausted from a strong move. So we're measuring a strong move. And price needs to pause or pull back during a resting or consolidation period prior to making its next move. Whether it's up or down, we don't know. We just know that it's very likely that this is going to be a good point for that to happen. The indicators that I talked about and I showed you indicating that we had a strong push in the previous video, this is our OBOS indicator or our overbought, oversold indicator. And we use that on the actual bar itself and we paint the outline of the bar to show us when we have an overbought or an oversold condition. You can tune the color and, and whether you want an outline or you want another indicator to indicate whether you got an overbought or an oversold condition. It's an almost constant trend in the price of an asset that exhausts all the buyers or sellers for that asset. Our MoMeter indicator, you'll notice that the bar fill colors go from a black to a lighter color gray to almost white. Okay, so we're measuring strong momentum. Strong momentum often signals that something will most likely be changing soon and that the trend may consolidate or retrace or pull back. Our speed tick indicator, the speed tick will pick up when it is likely that orders being processed through the markets are processed so quickly it is unlikely retail traders, that's you and me, are able to trade that fast because we don't have the hardware. We don't have the location inside the exchanges in our servers that are next door inside the exchanges. We don't have the abilities that they have. These are the tracks they cannot hide. They, do it, they put in a lot of effort to hiding what they're doing so that they can create a reaction by us retail traders, okay? So we want to know what they're doing. We know if they're manipulating the market. They're running through a, a large percentage of the orders being processed are theirs. Whether that increases volume tremendously or not, it may or may not. So we're not looking at the amount of volume. We're looking at the rate of volume. Think of it as a speedometer, okay? Whether it's a big huge car or it's a tiny little motorcycle okay we're looking at the speed not the volume now after we measure all of that and we're we're convinced that man we've got some strong push the exhaustion is imminent but where where is that exhaustion going to finally kick in so what we're doing is we're measuring inside of every bar and we're reading price action we're reading the price action relative to the volume coming into the current bar relative to the previous bars. Okay, so if the previous bars are showing almost all down volume with very little buying, all selling, 
very little buying. Relative to these bars, we see a lot of buying along with the selling. The buyers have been sitting down here waiting and they start jumping in where they feel this is a value area. The sellers have been going for a long time and they've sold about all they can sell and they're exhausted and the buyers are starting to, to take control. All of that is inside this bar, all right? So we're looking for an alert that there's an imbalance between supply and demand. And then we're looking for divergence. We have a number of different divergence indicators. On this chart, we have what we call the flash, which is divergence from the RSI, or the Relative Strength Index Momentum Oscillator. That's this lightning bolt. This was our very first divergence indicator that we ever started using, and this was a game changer for us. It works so well, we created the McDiver. The McDiver uses the MACD momentum oscillator, right? And that's this diamond. So these are printed on top of each other. These two divergence indicators work so well. I took the same algorithm, and I applied five more momentum oscillators inside the Super D. You have the choice to turn them on and off and use whichever ones you want. This will just tell you down here how many momentum oscillators are suggesting that price and momentum have diverged. So when price of an instrument and an indicator, index, or other related instrument move in opposite directions, price will almost always try to sync up with momentum. Momentum moves first, price is going to try to catch it. That's how we know what's likely to happen next as exhaustion is setting in. And then we have our support and resistance, which you saw in the previous videos. You saw our support and resistance lines. We use a support and resistance pivots, and we also use mid pivots. Our indicator, you can use any number of algorithms to calculate pivots. We use in the trade room floor trader pivots and mid pivots. This concludes video three. Please feel free to proceed to video four in the series to get started learning about why second brain trading has such a strong edge that we trade every day.